Their light continues to shine brighter than ever before. I've never thought that an experiment... girlies think that Sarah J Mass does the point of view switching thing well and a lot Terry Goodkind <laughs> and his POV switching makes Sarah J Mass look like a little girl <laughs> it is crazy it, it, it is bizarre you'd be like reading and you're like who are these people <laughs> And then when you're second chapter into them, you're like, hmm, <laughs> actually curious what they're doing. But at the same time, I am 118 pages in and I have not had Kaylin or Zed's POV, not once. And it's been Richard's like maybe two times. <laughs> I'm like, where are Richard and Kaylin? <laughs> What's going on? Who are these people? Like, I know who these people are now. I figured it out. But. Literally, where where is Kaylin? <laughs> what is she doing? Is she okay? How is she since the end of the last book? The last book ended with Kaylin's POV. I am 120 pages in. Where the fuck is Kaylin? <laughs> How is she doing? How is her sister Cirilla, which by the way, obsessed with the fact that my, my online pen name is Cyril and there's a character in these books called Cirilla, but anyway, anyway, I'm just, I have lots of questions, so I'm going to keep reading, but I'm worried it's going to get really late. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. Sorry, I just washed my hair and I can't I can't do anything with my hair until it dries. <laughs> Contrary to most people with wavy-ish hair, it's not actually more manageable when it's wet for me. It's just a fucking disaster when it's wet. Anyway, it's the next evening from the last clips of me reading and I'm about to do some more reading now. Have Blood of the Fold. I'm enjoying it so far, but I am 130 pages in and still no Kaylin, so <laughs> not sure what's going on there. Um, it's Easter, it's Easter, yay! So it's a long weekend, so I hope I can get some good reading done, um, but also I really need to do some uni work. I feel like I'm playing catch up. I, I know really I'm not that much behind. I think I'm just anxious because I have two assessments due, not this Sunday coming, but the 7th of April. Um, and I've made headway on both of them, but yeah, I don't know. The anxiety is just getting to me. Um, so that's kind of like looming over me and causing me like a bit of um, stress with reading. But I'm also like so addicted to Married at First Sight. I'm desperately trying to get up to date, but I think I'm only a couple of episodes behind now. And then, then I'll be up to date and this, then uh, the show's about to end and this won't consume my life anymore. And then I think my stress will really disappear because this show is making me incredibly stressed as well. It's ridiculous. Married at First Sight season, Australia season 11. If you want drama, you should watch this show. It's insane. <sighs> I'm also going to Bowral with uh, my friend from work on Saturday. We're going to go to Books Ever After, which is where I got the special edition romance books that were in my book called like 
my, my book called eh my video called like romance book haul um but i'll tag like there i'll tag what am i even saying i have no grasp of the english language it is my first language i can't speak it okay right all. anyway i will probably put like their web page below but the the website's kind of shonky i'm not going to lie to you but they, they are legit i had like a list of books i wanted to get from there like i went through their website and i made made up a little list and some things said out of stock online um but i thought maybe they could have it in the store so i made up my little list and then i checked their instagram because i was like i'll dm them there and ask and i saw from their comments on one of their own posts on instagram that one book i was interested in was out of stock in store as well but they hadn't mentioned anything about the other book i was interested in so I sent them a message and I said, hey, I can see it's out of stock online, but I was wondering if you did have any in store. And they said it was out of stock, no stock in store. So I asked if it would be coming back in stock soon. And they said within the next few months. So, oof, oh, very frustrating. But they have um, a beautiful hard copy from Willow, like of one of Willow Winter's books coming um, up for pre-order on the 20th of April. So so I want to see if when that releases or around the time that's going to release, if they have restocked the other books I'm interested in. I don't know. I just need to wait and see. I, I hate things not being in stock. Um, anyway, I don't know why I'm thinking about that. I'm stressing myself out. I'm just going to read while Married at First Sight plays in the background and I get up to date with the second cheating scandal of the season. So I'm just going to put on a Married at First Sight to get this stress out of my life as much as I can and read and enjoy my Easter long weekend. So excited. She only has half a soul, which means that she isn't able to really feel the Hi, it's Good Friday and it's the evening. I'm here to give you a bit of an update. <laughs> so I've not done too much today. I went for a walk this morning. I did think about going to the gym, but I just felt more in a mood to go for a walk. So I did. I was going to go on a second one this afternoon, but I ended up having a nap for an hour and a half. I don't nap too often, so it was pretty surprising for me, uh, but it was good. I feel so refreshed. It was lovely. Um, so yeah, I just got done having dinner, had, um, like a loaded potato with baked beans, <laughs> ridiculous, but you know what, it actually works as a calorie deficit food, so don't come for me for my jacket potato, okay? This morning I was working on an assignment, um, and then I was just so tired I came and took a break. I read quite a bit actually, I mean, every time I show this book I feel like it doesn't look like I've fucking read anything extra. Um, but I am 500 pages into Alexander Hamilton now and the um, biography itself ends at 731 so I'm not too far off. I'm slowly making progress through this and I wish I was filming when I was reading this but I needed my phone <laughs> to do my timer for my cooking so I couldn't use it to record while I was reading but I wish I was because Oh my god, blood of the world. Terry good kind. Sometimes I make the mistake of going on the internet and like reading what other people think about these books and it is just like such a polarizing series, but I flippin' love them. <laughs> they are so good. I don't care what anyone says. I was just like in shock. <laughs> I am 252 pages in, still no Kaylin. The girl is not in sight, ta. And then Richard just did something that really irked me. I didn't like it very much. I, I presume it wasn't his fault. <laughs> I presume there's some sort of magic responsible for Richard's reaction, but basically this um, duchess who, so she's just had something quite horrific done to her by the blood of the fold 
um, and then the Blood of the Fold like left um, Aiden Drill because I don't know where the fuck they're going, but oh, that the Blood of the Fold are going to go and try chase down Kaylin because um, Tobias, like the Lord General or whatever of the Blood of the Fold, figured out. Um, he started to see the wizard's web cast over Kaylin when he asked Richard, like, who he was, what, what the name of his future wife was, because Richard's like, I'm gonna get married to the Queen of Galea. And so Tobias says, oh, what's the Queen of Galea's name? And Richard said, Kaylin Amnell. <sighs> so apparently that was enough for the Blood of the Fold to sniff out sniff out the web um, so now he know Tobias has left the town with his mates and his sister because he's realized he needs to go chase down Kaylin Amnell thankfully Richard has sent Gratch to go <laughs> and find Kaylin and Zed and bring them back to Aiden Drill um, rather than proceeding to Galea so that's good hopefully he gets there first however Richard's like I was hoping we'd get Kaylin soon, that they'd be reunited soon, because I don't mind it, I just find it frustrating, but most people have a criticism that these books essentially follow the same formula um, that requires that Richard and Kaylin get separated for great lengths of time. They were together for the majority of Wizard's first rule, um, and then they got separated towards the end when Richard was captured by the Maud Sith. <sighs> In the second book, which is my favorite book so far, but they were separated pretty much the entire time. It was so endlessly frustrating. And they were never reunited. They were only reunited like in the spirit realm towards the end of the book. And now I'm about what, like 30% through Blood of the Fold and Richard and Kaylin still aren't together. And I know that in the next book, Faith of the Fallen, they're gonna be separated again because my friend told me that they're gonna be separated again to warn me. Um, so it's a little bit frustrating because I love their relationship. I just want them to be together. But where was I? I was getting something. Oh, the Duchess had something quite horrific done to her by the blood of the fold. And I believe uh, Lunetta, which is a Lord General of the blood of the fold's sister, who is a sorceress, cast like some sort of spell on the Duchess to make her do their bidding. Um, and now the Duchess has like come to Richard at the confessor's palace and said I will I'm like now the next in line for the Kelton throne I will give you dominion over the Keltish lands if you just like offer me your protection I just want to be here like in the room next to you and be protected and Richard's like oh easy which fair enough like I can see through this bitch but he doesn't know better the seeker the seeker of fucking truth can't puzzle this out <laughs> um but then, like, the Duchess obviously has some sort of, uh, like, enticement spell or something going on. And Richard's, like, fucking, like, literally about to go this woman. He's, like, super got the hots for her. I'm like, think of Caitlin! Think of Caitlin! I, like, literally punched the book. I was like, Bridget, pull your head in! Oh. Mm. He frustrates me limitlessly. I did see though, although I disagree with most people's criticisms of this series, um, a lot of the criticisms I can't relate to, I, I understand where they say like, oh, he put, he, Terry Goodkind ripped this from like Lord of the Rings. I can see where they draw that thing. Uh, but I saw someone else said that these series are essentially just like, he's ripped the Wheel of Time. I haven't read the Wheel of Time, but I might after this at some point to see if there is any valid criticism if that is a valid criticism anyway but essentially I don't agree with most of the criticism of these books online because I really enjoy them but one thing someone said was really funny I was talking about a situation that must be coming up in like Faith of the Fallen or something I haven't I haven't read it yet and bad memory so I don't even remember what that situation was but this person online says um like Richard is extremely dumb all the time and can never figure anything out until like the very last moment and then he Richards himself out of it and I was like that's 
kind of that's kind of true. Richard is the seeker of truth. He's supposed to be able to puzzle out everyone's bullshit. Like that's his job. That's why he was named the seeker. And sometimes he can do it instantly and conveniently. And you're like, oh, thank God, Richard's here. The majority of the time, you're like, um, Richard, open your big open your big fucking handsome grey eyes that everyone's always talking about look around like it, even in um even in stone of tears when he was at the palace of the prophets and he's like oh i can trust this woman and i was like no you can't she's sister of the fucking dark and he goes into the forbidden fucking forest with her and only then when she like literally has this evil demonic thing and he's like yeah she just, oh yeah let's dive in and i'm gonna tap into your heart and only once he's starting to die does he figure out that she's a baddie like richard isn't this your whole gig your whole gig to know what's going on and he doesn't but it, that's not really a criticism <laughs> from me i enjoy it i like feeling something when i read for me, like, to feel nothing while I read is what makes a book extremely mid. And, like, obviously there's a difference between... If I'm reading a book and the emotion I'm feeling is, like, hatred. Like, I'm suffering through the book. <laughs> Archangel Storm. <laughs> suffering through the book. That's not good. That's not the sort of emotion I want to be feeling. But if something makes me feel, like, frustration at the characters, makes me gasp if I feel physically sick like all that sort of thing makes it a good book to me if it incites emotions um so yeah maybe people don't like how gory it is and like the female characters always like the threats against them is always like some sort of rapey scenario i understand why people might not like that or think it's weak but to me it makes me feel something and like that i feel like that criticism comes from men oftentimes like that oh the women it's like oh, constantly like rape and sexual harassment that's like the thing that they have to face and I'm like yeah but that's kind of like maybe Terry sort of gets it <laughs> when you're a woman like that's actually the thing you feel the most fear the most like to be have someone just come and slit your neck would be like one thing and it might get you a gasp but it's not like horrifying but like say in stone of the tears when kaylin was like really massively under threat of getting raped i was like on the edge of my seat like, oh my god what's gonna happen that is genuinely stressful yeah anyway all that to say i'm enjoying this so far i think i fell i think this is like going quite similar in terms of rating so far as stone of tears like stone of tears in the first bit i was like oh yeah this is fine and then as i got like towards the second half to the back of the book that's when it was like really ramped up this has already had several situations where i've been like gasping punching the book vocalizing out loud which typically makes something a five star in my opinion <laughs> anyway so probably put on some more youtube read some more of this because i'm up to date did I, did I say anything last night that I'm up to date on Married at First Sight? <laughs> that means all I have left are the final vows and I suppose like the reunion episode when that starts airing on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I got a little bit of my life back, hence why I got some uni done this morning. Yeah. I think that was all. Obviously, I'm going to go to Bowral tomorrow and go to Books Ever After. Um, I'm gonna pick my friend up at around around like 9 30. I gotta put fuel in my car tomorrow morning. It, it occurred to me today. I was like, oh yeah, my plan on uh, Thursday. I was I drove to the fuel station and saw like there was a queue all the way down the road. I was like, never mind, I'll just come another time. Drove home and then I thought, oh, I'll go to the gym on Good Friday and then go and get some fuel but I didn't go to the gym and then this afternoon when I woke up from my nap it occurred to me oh I'll need fuel for tomorrow so I'm just gonna go fuel up on the way to my friend's house tomorrow when I go and pick her up I'm so excited I can't wait I what books am I probably gonna I'll obviously show you like a haul of the books I get from books ever after but I'm going to get probably um Oh, no, I can't show you the list because it's on my phone. No. 
I need a camera. Um, so I'm gonna get Court of Nightmares by K.A. Knight because they came out, um, Books Over After came out with like an alternate dust jacket the other day and that like literally made me go, oh, I want that. So I'm gonna get Court of Nightmares. And it's about like vampires. I'm like, yeah, I like that. I don't know if I've had this conversation with you guys before. I'm not sure. Anyway, moving on. I'm gonna get the second and third book in the Kingdom of Stars and Shadows series. I wish they had the fourth at the store too, but they don't yet. I might ask them when I'm there tomorrow if they're gonna get it in because I didn't realize there was a fourth book because um, Books Ever After only sells the three and then someone I follow on Instagram, she posted about how she finished the fourth book yesterday and I was like, damn, I didn't know there was one. So I'll probably just read it on Kindle first depending if Books Ever After says they're gonna like have it in. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to get, what else was I gonna get? Oh, Highest Bitter by um, Willow Winters and was it Lauren? She co-wrote it with someone. And anyway, yeah, I'll show you when I get it. And then the fifth book I'm going to get is, what is the fifth? I feel like I was definitely getting five books. What was the fifth book I was planning on getting? I think it's a Willow Winters book as well. Hmm. Oh, Secrets and Submission by Willow Winters. That's probably what I'm going to get. There were other things I wanted as well, but they're not in stock. I'll just have to be patient. Um, and then my friend um, and I were having like a big conversation last night. We were sending back and forth like um, special editions of like Throne of Glass because Throne of Glass is both of our favorite series ever. <laughs> so we're sending back and forth special editions and like lamenting about the expense. And then we stayed up for Rebecca Ross's announcement of Onyx Storm. So that was pretty cool. I'm pretty excited for that. And we were both talking about how, um, so I have like this, my sprayed edge edition of Fourth Wing with the dust jacket by Blue Lee Blue. And now Blue Lee Blue has released an Iron Flame one as well. So I'm probably gonna get the black version of the dust jacket. There's no rush to get it. Um, Blue Lee Blue said it's gonna be in stock for a while. So I'm not rushing or anything. But I really want to get the Australian Sprayed Edge edition of Iron Flame to match the fourth wing as well, but it's like almost impossible to find stock. There might be some stock at Harry Hot Hogs in the city, um, but I literally won't know till I try and try and reserve it. It says it's in stock, but we'll see when I try and reserve it. Um, but my friend just proposed that we have a look around Bowral at some of the other bookstores tomorrow and see if Iron Flame Sprayed Edges is, is in stock there. And I'm like, mm, that's a good idea. Because if we can find it there, that would be great. But I don't have high hopes. Most people are reselling the Sprayed Edges for Iron Flame on eBay for like $100 plus, And I'm just not doing that. Not for a secondhand copy of a book. Are you kidding me? Um, so fingers crossed I'll be able to get my hands on it because now I'm just growing worried. <laughs> I would just like them to, I have, I have a vision. I have a vision of what I want them to look like and I would be a little bit dejected if I had fourth wing with spray edges and not iron flame. But my thing is as well, I just don't understand why like you can readily get the fourth wing with the sprayed edges special edition at Dimmix, but Dimmix doesn't have any stock of the iron flame sprayed edges. Like, What's the difference? Iron Flame's actually newer. You would think they would have that rather than for fourth wing. What would I know? <laughs> anyway, I'll leave that there for the moment and I'm gonna get back to reading. Cherry <laughs> oh, good kind, my love. Do you like my Stanley knockoff? It's Oasis. My sister got it for me for Christmas and it's my baby. All right, let's read. I'm just about to leave to go and fuel up my car and pick up my friend so we can go to the bookstore, but fit check. <laughs> uh, 
My top is from Zara. I'm wearing my St. Christopher Miraculous Medal, which is like, of course I'm wearing a Miraculous Medal to go and buy smut books, but anyway. <laughs> Heretical and especially on Holy Saturday, but anyway. My top is from Zara. My tailored shorts are from Uniqlo. Also like, I've lost weight, yay. <laughs> and I'm wearing my white and gray um, Nikes. And I'll probably just take this bag as always. Do you like my my little Hello Kitty I got in Tokyo? Isn't she cute? Kitty chan. I also really want to show you this. Look at this. It's Morfusant. Apparently they have um Morfusant.uniqlo right now. Um so I might buy some of it. But look at this. It's like a lip gloss holder <laughs> with a little mirror so I keep my I've clearly had this for so long look how much it's peeling this is Fenty and then these are probably the best lip balms known to mankind the dermal this is the Manuka honey one and then I got this NARS Rose Cliff um, lipstick in a Mecca like beauty loop box ages ago but this is like surprisingly a really good color for me let me put it on see it's like quite similar to my natural lip color so I like it what a coincidence to get that in the beauty loop box. I like never shop at Mecca anymore. It's such a fucking rip off. All right. Okay. Let's go. I just paid $2.32 a liter for fuel. I hate this city. Well, well, well. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm back from the bookstore. Okay, I went in like, I'm buying five books and five books only and I've decided, yeah, anyway, you know how it's gone, but let's get into a haul. <laughs> Secrets and Submissions by Willow Winters and Amelia Wilde. Um, I might, I might do a blurb read for each of these, but yeah, this has the red foil ledges in it pretty. Okay. I, I haven't read anything about this book, but I did plan on buying this one, actually. I should have known when I couldn't keep my eyes off her that this would be a mistake. I was hired pr to protect her, this woman who's lost everything, yet there's an obvious fire that blazes behind her beautiful gaze. She stares back, daring and tempting me. It calls to a side of me that's darker and longs to tame her. We both have secrets, we both have a past we're not ready to face. More than that, we both want to get lost in each other falling into a forbidden game of control and power, of submission and dominance. The moment she agrees to my terms, I know I've crossed a line, one of many rules I'm willing to break. No one can know, not a soul, but secrets in the life I lead never last for long. Hmm. So this is Secrets and Submissions is the complete Love the Way You trilogy in one. One couple and one happily ever after. That's it. I still got the plastic on it. Ooh. Let's keep going with more Willow Winters. So this is Lauren Landish and Willow Winters' highest bidder. Look at that! It is a bit bent and warped, but I'm just gonna like put it between two books and it should be quite nice, but look at that! <laughs> so I do know a little bit about this because I've seen Willow post quite a bit about it on Instagram, on her page. This is four must-read sexy and contemporary romances in one collection. Includes all four full-length standalone romances in the highest bidder series, featuring demanding, rich, and powerful men, all with happily ever afters and no cliffhangers. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is like, I don't know if they're all BDSM stories or just one of them, but yeah, I've seen stuff from Willow. It's so beautiful. This is paperback. So you know, me plus paperbacks, like they gotta be, I'll do it, I'll do it for a sprayed edge. What can I say? 
I do wish this came in a hardback, but um, you can get a hardback version from Willow Winter's website. I don't think with these edges though, but it's like 55 US dollars and I'm like, I can't. Not, <laughs> once you convert it to Australian, it's just too much. How about something I didn't plan on getting? Uh, this is a Ruthless Royals by Amanda Richardson, the completed duet. So this is two books in one as well. There was another one there too called Savage Hearts that if I like this, I'll give it a try. So, but this one I found the blurb just slightly more intriguing than Savage Hearts. So their names are Whispers in the Hallways, Hunter, Ash, Ledger and Samson, the Kings. Four of the most beautiful men I've ever seen, with cruel agendas and an even crueler reign over Ravenwood Academy. Wreaking havoc in our small New England town, no one asks questions. For the most part, people ignore or avoid them. After all, they're royalty here. Because one of them, the cruelest one, is the headmaster's son and my new stepbrother. They can try to torment me, they can try to break me, but they have no idea what I've endured. They're used to getting whatever their ruthless little hearts desire. Maybe I should keep my mouth shut, maybe I should let them win, but I'm not afraid of getting my hands dirty. Lord knows I'm used to it by now. My name is Briar Monroe, and these kings are about to find out just how fucked up this queen can be. <laughs> and, it pretty and silver. It's my first that has silver edges. Savage Hearts has silver as well, so if I do get it, they'll look nice next to each other. I also wasn't planning on getting this. So, Books Ever After Where I Went is owned by the author Kat Mason. Um, and I have been wanting to read some of her stuff, but I wasn't sure whether I should just read it on Kindle first and then decide if I'd get the full hardback collection of her stuff. But my friend and I decided why not, and we each got um, the paperback gold foil of Chasing Love. And if I do like this, I will invest in the um, full hardback collection. Um, but Kat was actually in there working today so she ended up signing the book for me which is really nice but oh my god it's so gorgeous he was my best friend's older brother my first love who left town without so much as a goodbye eight years later i've said yes to marrying another man the ever so perfect julian baker i'm finally ready to let go of my past for a new future but like all gut-wrenching love triangles my past and future collide in a cruel twist of fate Inside a busy restaurant, he's sitting at the table next to me wearing a jealous stare, and I'm forced to face the man who destroyed my heart in high school. Lex Edwards, now billionaire tycoon, won't back down easily. He's ruthless cunning and no longer the sweet and loving college graduate studying to become a doctor. Just like me, our tumultuous affair broke him. But now he is hellbent on winning me back, and Lex Edwards will stop at nothing to prove just how powerful our love is, even if it means we need to relive the past. So that's Chasing Love by Kat Mason. It sounds really good. I'm excited to give it a go. And then, of course, I intended to get these. Um, a Kingdom of Blood and Betrayal and A Kingdom of Venom and Vows. Beautiful by Holly Renee. These are the second and third books in um, to follow up A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows. Um, I, think, I think Blood and Betrayal... Blood and Betrayal is the second book, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I'll, I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure. So this one says, My fate is bonded to two princes, one born of blood, the other of power, but my trust lies in neither. My skin is cursed by the stars, my fate damned by desire. But when the Dark Prince offers me a bargain that will save his people and my life, the cruel and intoxicating male gives me no choice. Our union is his revenge and I am his sacrifice. His lies are unforgivable, his wicked touch still bathes me in sin. He is my mate and he is tortured by a curse to protect his people from his own family. I could now see him for exactly who he was, so why can't I get his alluring touch out of my head? I am the key to saving his kingdom, but he alone has the power to ruin me. I'm going to take the price sticker off the back of this because I don't need the reminder of how much I'm running I spent. <laughs> I spent way more. I probably spent like a hundred dollars more than I was intending. Uh, yeah. I entered into a bargain, choosing my mate over my freedom. But I underestimated the crown prince who took me un took me. His touch like venom, his vengeance lethal. He craves a power I no longer hold, and he'll sacrifice every part of me until he gets it. But I don't belong to him, I belong to his brother. His brother who will come for me, consequences be damned. 
My fate is entangled between two princes, one who craves my power, the other, other who covets me, and I have more to lose than I ever imagined. War rages in a game between queens, and I have become their pawn, but I will fight for my life, for my mate, and he will raise kingdoms to get me back. This must be the third one. There is a fourth as well. I asked Kat while we were in there if the fourth was going to be published with the gold sprayed edges and she said she would ask Holly because a lot of people have been asking Kat if they were going to get it lately so we'll see but I'm, I'm keen to read those I had a really good time with the first book oh, there's another bag <laughs> I got this bookmark um, you can't really see it because of the sunlight but it says falling for the villain one page at a time let me open it up my friend got a bookmark as well that was like, um, I don't watch my porn, I read it like a fucking lady. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, there we go. That's good because I only have one bookmark at the moment and it's the one Young Hyeng made, um, which I love. But I kind of want to frame the one Young Hyeng made and just because it's paper and so I'm worried I don't want it to get destroyed. And then finally I got Court of Nightmares by K.A. Knight. Look at this dust jacket. I wasn't too crazy about the original cover, so when the, this dust jacket um, was announced, I was like, I have to go get it. That was pretty much what made us decide, yep, let's go. This is the original hardback cover. It's cool, but it's, you know, it is what it is. But I way prefer this cover with the dust jacket. Oh no, hang on. I don't wanna cause problems. <laughs> there we go. And the sprayed edges are pretty cool too. So this one says, There are many things that go bump in the night and I am one of them. As a vampire who was born to fulfill a prophecy, my life was planned before I was created. I obeyed every rule and I became the perfect vampire, but one night changed everything. Rejected by the man who was destined for me, who was supposed to love me forever, I do the only thing I can, I flee. Into the night, nursing my broken heart. Being a rejected mate corrupts the soul. However, and in this game of courts and kings, nobody wins. Nobody except the monsters in the shadows. The monsters that save me, welcome me, and make me one of them. Welcome to the court of nightmares where all your wicked dreams come true. Look at the back on this. That's so pretty. And then the, um, like, chapter art. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> How cool. Um, but yeah, the chapter art itself is like, there's art on every chapter. It's gorgeous. Oh, fuck, this dust jacket, bro. Uh-oh. Hang on, I'm having I'm having a moment. I'm having a moment. Let me fix this. There we go. There we go. Ah. So cool. So cool. I'm stoked. Um, and that was it. That's my haul. Now I'm gonna take some pictures and videos of this stuff for content. Yay! It's like just occurred to me that something I haven't done and have been meaning to do is review this book. <laughs> I, I was just looking at the shorts I'd posted and realized that when I posted a short about does it hurt, I wrote in the caption, I'll talk about this in my next video, and then I didn't talk about it in my next video. I totally forgot about it last weekly recap. Um, so here it is, Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. This is the first H.D. Carlton book I have read. I know most people start with like Hunting and Haunting Adeline, but I will get there eventually. Um, oh my gosh, I actually really liked this. I thought it was going to be, I remember saying before I read it like, oh, I'm gonna dive into the deep end, go balls to the walls and read this book. It was not, like it was not that intense. <laughs> There were the most intense thing that happened, and um, this is the scene my friend warned me about um, before I read the book, and I was kind of expecting when she said that, that the whole book would be like that, but it really wasn't. Um, the most like graphic thing that happens in this is that, so the main female character, her name's Soya, and the male main character's name is Enzo, and Soya is basically on the run, and she steals people's identities. Like She sleeps with men, and then she steals their identities. Um, so she meets Enzo and she does that to him. She sleeps with him, but they have like quite a real connection. Um, and she steals his identity anyway, and he's aware of it. 
but he finds her and gets her to spend time with him again and he basically says like i know what you've done they're out on a boat in the middle of the ocean he's like um a shark researcher that's what he does for a living and he <laughs> like kisses her and bites her lips so that she starts bleeding spoiler alert by the way and then he puts her head into the water while he has sex with her <laughs> to attract the sharks. It's fine. <laughs> um, but I did really like it. Like, I thought the focus would be all on the sex, but it wasn't at all. The majority of this is that after he while having sex with her, puts her head in the water to attract sharks. <laughs> he, um, like a storm blows in and they get like shipwrecked essentially and wash up on like this island where there's nothing but a lighthouse with an old guy living in it and a lot of it is about the mystery and the weird stuff happening in the lighthouse and these two not being able to get off the island for a whole month. Um, so it's about that. She kind of harps on in the beginning about like, oh, this is set in Australia, so ooh, big spiders and stuff like that. And then immediately like we'll say something that is not very Australian. Um, like she'd just been yapping about spiders and how expensive everything is. And then she talked about like Enzo left money on the table to cover their bar tab. I'm so sorry. I'm so bad at this content creation thing. Uh, I'm like tired from driving, but I'm also like <laughs> I'm thirsty because I had two energy drinks today, so I'm like Ugh. okay. <laughs> let's leave that there. Oh, but maybe let's not leave that there. Let me just say that in case I didn't give this a rating last time, this is like a a uh, four out of five or like a four and a half out of five for me it was pretty enjoyable i didn't mind it so i do look forward to reading more of hg carlton stuff in the future my favorite thing in this was not the relationship it was the sort of like mystery elements of the lighthouse and everything that was going on so yeah four or four and a half out of five pretty good book but also this special edition is immaculate ah, i love it I might leave this video here for now just because I'm not sure that I'm going to finish this book in time for tomorrow because I want to edit this and get it up tomorrow. Um, so I think I am just going to leave it here. This book is so good. I hope you enjoyed my little haul um, and I hope you enjoyed this. As you can tell from this video, I got like a cheap little phone tripod to try um as i said i wanted to <laughs> so let me know if you enjoyed this more like vlog-ish read with me-ish style um video i would really appreciate your feedback and i hope you enjoyed bye